pew, 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 pew. Oh, <laughs> hey guys, Michael here. Uh, let me take a break from gaming real fast to tell you about MultiplayerSquad.com. The Multiplayer Gaming Podcast is an independent podcast, which means we depend on listener support to do what we do every single week. So if you're really enjoying what you're hearing and the content we're putting out, consider supporting the show. We also give you extra perks like bonus episodes, which are really cool. It's really just a bunch of fun banter and all kinds of cool stuff, and we talk about random things. So if you want to support the show, head over to MultiplayerSquad.com and get started right now. All right! On to the show! Hello, fellow gamers. Welcome to the Multiplayer Gaming Podcast. We are three dads and lifelong gamers, and on Thursdays, we release these Twig episodes where we break down This Week in Gaming. Please remember to rate our show five stars, especially on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Also, come follow us on socials at MultiplayerPod, and come check out our Patreon page. Our show is funded by our listeners, and if you like what we do and want to ensure that our show continues, you can pledge an amount starting at $5 a month at MultiplayerSquad.com. You'll get access to two bonus episodes per month called The Squadcast, and you'll also get a shout-out on the main show. Once again, that is at MultiplayerSquad.com. I am your host, Paul. I'm so excited to break down the news this week. We've got a lot to cover. Joining me, first up, he's a man who loves adding games to his Steam library, and it's that time of year where he's about to go broke because there are so many deals he just can't pass up on. It's Michael. This is the worst time of year because it's my favorite time of year. And when we make fun of me on the show for having a, just an, a, an over exploding rotund uh, Steam library, it's because of the the summer and winter sales. And I've already got like nineteen games in my uh, in my cart, and nice. I'm like, am I really gonna play these? But it's eighty percent off. I have to buy it. It's eighty percent off. Uh, just it's gonna be rough. You can't afford not to buy it, right? That's true. And then joining us, he's an anti-hero pirate doing a half Robin Hood thing. He steals from the rich and tries to escape with the biggest pile of loot. It's Josh. I I would share a little <laughs> bit. You guys know me well enough. I'd share a little, you know. And then sure. I'd be like, no, the rest of this is mine. I earned it. <laughs> oh, man. We've got a, a, a packed show here for today. We are going to try to tackle five pieces of news stories today. We'll see how it goes. The show might end up going a little long. Who knows? But first up, we got to talk about the Steam Summer Sale, right? This hits every year. This is that time of year when you start seeing those games that are, you know, 80% off, 50% off. Maybe you would normally pass on it. All of a sudden, it starts looking a little bit more tempting. And I thought it would be fun if we all brought in a couple of game recommendations we can make to the people. So do you guys normally uh, pick up a couple games here with each Steam sale every <laughs> summer? A couple. <laughs> I, was gonna say, I pick up one or two. Michael picks up like one or two hundred. I, I have it on good authority that Gabe Newell actually sends Michael a a card, uh, you know, every summer and every winter for the Steam sale, just telling him thank you for allowing him to buy another yacht <laughs> for supporting Steam single handedly. That's what I do. They actually get. I actually they they send me reminders on the hour to my texts uh, i get text messages just hey you haven't put enough games in your cart and i'm like i got to go update my cart now <laughs> if anything bad ever happens to michael that's how we're going to find out steam is going to say this guy hasn't bought any games in the last 4 days are you okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then, right and then uh, they're going like, to let us know it's kind of like if something bad happens to you i'm going to have to actually annotate my will or my uh what do you call it that what's the other part of the will whatever uh my will to actually give away parts of my steam library uh, otherwise sure. it's going to be a big problem like uh whoever <laughs> is uh taking care of my my Estate. end of life stuff in my yeah. estate it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a mess if i don't actually say okay so let's see so uh late dangerous goes to josh clearly oh uh, you would yeah. not do that to me <laughs> what did i do to you man <laughs> you probably killed me you know. 
<laughs> that would be that'll be Michael's revenge from the grave. That would be my punishment. I'm sorry. Mike would be like, yeah, you, you did this to me. No, here's Last will and testament penance. says you must play 200 hours of Elite Dangerous. Oh, man. Oh, See, goodness. What's funny is like Michael's the guy that buys all the games. I browse the games. I definitely really enjoy window shopping the Steam sale. Yeah. But I haven't like I know and you guys know I have game ADD. I'm usually playing three four games at a time for sure but i know that i'm not going to be able to play a lot of these and then a little bit of my cheap side kicks in and i'll just wish list things so i don't forget about them but i will not necessarily buy them either that makes so. sense yeah so josh i'm curious to hear uh you got a recommendation here from this year's steam sale I, I mean, I have lots, but what I wanted to do on this one is a lot of times we talk about games and people go, man, you guys really hyped up this game, uh, but it was a little pricey. You know what I mean? Or I keep meaning to pick that up, but I haven't. It's $40. I'm not sure. You know, I'm on a budget and there's a game coming out that I want to play or something like that. So the Steam sale is a perfect time to say, hey, these are games that we've talked about in the past that we highly, highly recommend. Now is your chance to play this game because you absolutely should. So these two games for me are games that I cannot imagine somebody picking up and then going, Josh, I hate you. You steered me in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? (laughs) And so it's like these are games that to me are absolutely incredible and worth every penny of a $60 price tag, much less on heavy, heavy Steam sales. So the first one, one of my favorite RPGs of all time, Divinity Original Sin 2. You guys have heard us talk about it. It's in our top 10 on our leaderboard. I know that we mention it a good bit, but there is a, a reason for that. Yes, there is a small barrier to entry because there are a lot of different things in the game, but it doesn't mean that you can't pick it up and play it. And the game does a phenomenal job of teaching you how to play. And then you can figure out, I can, I have so much control over this game that I can almost break it because of the choices it gives me. Every quest has four to five different solutions. And that's not even counting some player creativity where you can actually do even more than that. So for me, Divinity Original Sin 2 is one of the best RPGs ever made. I have actually played through it completely twice. I think I have 200 plus hours in it at this point. Um, and that is on sale right now for seventeen ninety nine. So for eighteen Ooh. bucks, you are getting a game that you can easily put a hundred hours into, and is one of my favorite RPGs ever. So I cannot recommend it enough. Even if it's not really your thing, I think there's a ton to love about Divinity Original Sin two. And um, we did a deep dive. So if you do pick it up and play it. Then you can go back and listen to that episode. Or if you're on the fence, listen to the deep dive and then realize that for $18, you're getting... I mean, I can't think of a better bargain, man. It's just phenomenal. Um, and hey, then do, we the, do, any, do we do any spoilers on the deep dive for a story or anything like that? No, I, I don't actually, think so. You guys did that a while back, I think. I don't think I ever caught that episode. So I do want to go back and listen to it and spend $18. <laughs> I don't think there's I don't think there's any like spoilers. No, we definitely talk about no. gameplay and some choices and what the game entails, but we don't get into the plot a ton on that one mm. just because that's a game that's better left. Like you make the decision, so you kind of form the plot in that game too. So Yeah, you know what uh, I do too is uh, the problem is I own it on my PlayStation because I can play couch co op with my wife, but I also want to get it for eighteen dollars on Steam, which is the stupidest thing in the world. <laughs> here's the thing I'll say on that. The final thing, because I know we've got a lot to talk about. Yeah, there, sorry, the, I'm riding bicycles. No, here. you're okay, but the divinity the tutorial in divinity is honestly like the first zone that you're in which is fort uh joey is probably a six to eight hour segment of the game and when you get out of that that's when the game actually starts to take off so if you play it and you're four hours in don't get me wrong you're gonna enjoy that but just know that this game really ramps up immensely as far as the the like why it's so amazing after you leave the first area that's where i feel like the game really takes off so um, it's not that the beginning's not great, but it's just, it gets so much better after that. So stick with it as well. Um, and then the other one, I, I gush about this game all the stinking time. People are probably sick of me talking about it, but again, this is one of those games that I feel like every gamer should absolutely play. Most people that pick it up, I, we've had people in our discord saying, Hey, I picked this up. This game's great. Um, and that's Subnautica. Honestly, to me, one of the most memorable games that I have ever played. It really just sticks with you. It's enjoyable from start to finish, in my opinion. There are a couple parts where, yes, you spend a lot of time kind of looking around for that next leap in progression, but it's worth it. 
Um, soundtrack's amazing. Graphics are amazing. Story is incredible. Insanely memorable game. Subnautica, believe it or not, is the game that launched my love of survival crafting progression games. And lately in the last probably five to six years, they're one of my favorite genres. And Subnautica, I credit for that 100%. Spend the $15 on it. It's absolutely insanely good. Oh, yeah. Very, very common games that many people love, whether it's DOS 2 or Subnautica. Right. And and the reason that I bring those up is they're on sale. I mean, they're both under $20. And you're getting an amazing gaming experience for a price that cannot be beat. So that's why I wanted to kind of put these two back in the limelight again to say, hey, I know we talk about them. I know you hear it. But now's your chance to pick these up. Now's your chance to enjoy two absolutely phenomenal games that everybody should experience. Yeah, and I mean the the amount of hours you can put into both those games for under twenty bucks, insane. Right, exactly. All right, what games do you have, Michael? All right, so uh, I can't, I can't not. I I was so excited that Horizon Zero Dawn is half off because it's twenty five bucks. And guys, I've talked about this. I know Paul and and Josh were kind of lukewarm on it, but absolutely one of my favorite um, RPG games. Uh, I beat. I got a hundred percent completion on this game in one hundred and three hours, and that's like a hundred percent every single uh, achievement you can possibly get. So it's not super long. It's got like a twenty hour main campaign, but for twenty bucks, it's half off right now. Pick it up. The graphics are great. The music's great. The story is great. I did cry a little bit, so that's a big benchmark. Um, I'll kind of rapid fire the next couple. I'm going to do a couple more real fast, but. Um, a uh, hunter call of the wild. I know it's it's crazy. <laughs> I I never thought I would enjoy a hunting game. I'm not a hunter in real life, really. Um, mostly because I I figured that I'd miss and probably injure an animal and I'd feel really bad for the rest of my life. But uh, amazing graphics that'll actually make you feel like you're there. It's ultra realistic. Um, everything you know, you've got to wait for a while and stuff. But it's a great way if you just want something to kind of wind down because it's not action packed. It's very chill. But I've got 323 hours in it. It's seventy six percent off. It's four dollars and seventy nine cents for under five bucks, and I think I got it on the Steam sale last year when it was like five bucks as well. And the sequel comes in out in August. It's called Way of the Hunter. So if you are maybe thinking about checking out a, like an ultra realistic hunting game for under five bucks, totally worth it. And then I wanted to rapid fire real fast, just three real quick VR games because VR games are almost never on a big sale on the Steam sale. You always get like 20% off on them. But I found three of them that I absolutely love, and they're all at least 70% off. So uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which ironically enough is a, is a VR game, uh, is 85% off. It's usually $90, guys. It's $13 right now. $13 nice. for a $90 game. So it's an epic deal. Um, also, Abduction, which is a game from the creators of Myst. It's a really good Myst-esque game. It's $9. It's 70% off. And then also... Um, Where's my last one? Oh, keep talking. Nobody explodes, guys. It's five bucks. You've heard us talk about it. Go pick it up. <laughs> there we go. I think I made some time back on that. I kind of rapid fired mine a little bit, but great games. <laughs> go for it. Yeah, you know, when I was looking at all the games on sale, I was shocked at how many we've done deep dives on. I would I would dare to say probably 90% of the games we've done a deep dive on, it's probably currently on sale. Right. M- my strategy with this was to go with games that are under 10 bucks. So games that are maybe just a couple years old, but they're on sale and it's going to be really good bang for your buck. And I've got Celeste, which for my money is the best platformer ever made. That's currently 75% off for $4.99. Not a terribly long game, but I think it has the best movement and the best abilities in a platformer. And the difficulty ramps up perfectly where it makes for such a fun experience all the way from beginning to end. Uh, that game's an absolute blast. And I also have Dragon Age Inquisition, 80% off. It's $7.99. Dragon Age Dreadwolf is not right around the corner, but you know it's around a couple corners. But if you want to play Inquisition in preparation for that, you can pick it up now for less than 10 bucks. Incredibly fun open world RPG, fantastic story, really deep lore. And I highly recommend taking Solus with you on all the missions because we do know that he's going to be a central character in the <laughs> new game. So I, I would highly recommend doing that. And uh, also the Batman Arkham Collection. You can get all three oh, games yeah. for $8.99. And that's, that's a, a three deal. for one. That's yeah. smoking right yeah. there. 
Hey, I got to yeah. backpedal real fast because I just lied to everybody. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is not VR. Rise of the Tomb Raider is VR. That's 80% off and it's $6. Uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is still $90. Normally, it's $13 now, so still pick it up. <laughs> Sorry, I wanted to make sure I corrected nice. that. <laughs> and uh, the last thing I was going to mention is that we are going to be doing an upcoming deep dive on Disco Elysium. It is yeah. currently 65% off, so if you want to pick it up, it's $14. And that'll get you prepared for that deep dive, which is going to come in about a month. So that'll give you a little bit of head time to prep. All right. Next up here, we have a new PvE VP game Ooh. coming out from Sega and Creative Assembly. This is a game that is called Hyenas. And long story short, every match has five teams of three that are all competing to steal treasure from a spaceship, and then you have to escape with as much loot as you can. So you are fighting both NPCs along with fighting the other teams that are in this game. And maybe this will finally be the breakthrough PvE VP game that we've been waiting for, because the cycle died and they relaunched it as the cycle frontier scavengers died maybe this one will actually do it i the video that they showed on this is very cool it's very difficult to pick out what the gameplay elements are right? in the video so it's like I, I really i actually watched this a couple times because i feel like they showed a little bit of gameplay but it was difficult to pick out the one thing that i really liked about this video was the art style is almost this watercolor like brushed like style of character it's it's very unique and if that's what the game looks like number one that's pretty impressive to me but number two where they the thing that really caught my eye on this is there's a vast cast of characters which all seem to have unique and different abilities. So when you take a PvEVP game, which everybody that's listening knows we are huge fans of that genre, even though that genre hasn't done very well. The cycle did it the best, and then the cycle went away because they just didn't advertise their game. Scavengers, like you said, Paul, we got excited about, and then it just kind of didn't work. The extraction on that game is a little weird. Um, but this genre has so much potential. And it's like there's got to be somebody out there other than the cycle devs who ruined it, that can nail this. And when they nail it, it's going to... I, I honestly think this is going to be like the next Battle Royale genre. You know, PUBG and Apex Legends nailed it. And that catapulted Battle Royales into the limelight, which are still insanely popular to this day. So if somebody can nail this PvEVP thing, I think it's drastically going to change like the gaming landscape, to be honest with you. And so what excites me about what we saw with Hyenas is it looks like it is a character-based PvEVP. There's one character that they show sliding across a floor, spraying like a foam barrier across the hallway so that your, your squad can either have cover or traverse without getting shot. Um, you know, they show what looks to be like a hacker or something like that with some kind of electronic skills. I, I mean, they showed off a lot of this. So if that's the case, I'm very excited about this. I love the art style that they showed in the trailer. So there's a lot of things that are starting to kind of stack up and get me really, really excited about this. The only downside is they're saying this game is still fairly early in development. Mm -hmm. So it's tough because it's like, well, what does that mean? Are we talking two years? Are we talking five years? Like, what are we talking here? But I love that people are trying to figure out how to make this genre work. Yeah, please don't be five years. Um, I'm excited about it, personally. Um, I'm not really a shooter player, but I do like playing on teams because then Paul or Josh can carry me, uh, which is really awesome. <laughs> uh, but I did also look up... Gaily, uh, GameDaily.biz says that 42% of gamers currently play Battle Royale games. So that's a huge market. So a game like this that's a really strong PvPVE, PvEVP, P, P, V, whatever, um, words. But um, a game like this that kind of has that draw, it uh, it could really... It could ultimately, you know, you're always wondering what the next gaming trend is going to be, what the next big thing is going to be, whether it be, you know, FPS, which, you know, Gold and I kind of kicked that off and Halo really kind of took it to a different level. Um, but I think it's a cool concept that there's five teams of three, you know, you're going to be going out and trying to steal loot, but also trying to fight each other and all that fun stuff. Um, I just think it's funny that on IGN, their website, they have in big, big, big red letters right in the middle of the page, a quote from the developers that says, we wanted to create this unpredictable chaotic space where players would find new gameplay. And I think that's really, it, it really harks on exactly what I see from 
the gameplay trailer is that it's it's totally chaotic it's totally different and it's where they'd find new gameplay because you know it's it's only really probably over five or six years we get a new type of gameplay you know rpgs have been around forever battle royale has been popular for what a decade now Maybe maybe under, maybe but even less, yeah. You know, maybe less, but maybe this is the next revolution in gaming. And this game does look fun, but I'm I'm in I'm in Camp Josh right now, where it's like I am I am concerned about the early development stage of it. I want to play it sooner rather than later, and I hope that the hype train doesn't get too big to where it's like you know maybe somebody else comes out with another big PvPVE or PVE. Somebody fix me on this. <laughs> we know we know what you mean. <laughs> that one before yeah. they can launch this game because this one I mean I love space stuff. It looks like it's right up my alley, and I'm going to play it. Yeah, the only thing I'd add on top of that is that they do mention that the ships are going to be full of sensors, switches, and interactive systems. So, so it kind of sounds like you can set up booby traps. <laughs> and stuff for people so if you're not a great shooter you know what maybe you can set a trap and sit around and flip that switch at the right moment and maybe kill someone that way and i thought that there's some real neat innovative stuff you might be able to do with that if if you guys out there do want to sign up for alpha testing they do currently let you sign up at playhyenas.com i did sign up for that so i'm hoping to maybe get a little bit of a early early look at that game and that'll be coming out on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. Is that part of the Steam sale? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, I'm not sure if you guys ever played A Plague Tale Innocence, but we do have a sequel coming up for that game. And one of the news stories this week did let us know that A Plague Tale Requ- uh, excuse me, A Plague Tale Requiem is going to release on October 18th, and we also got 10 minutes of new gameplay which I thought was pretty exciting. Uh, is this something that was anywhere on your guys' radar? I have looked at a Plague Tale Innocence multiple times. It's yep. one of those games that always catches my eye. It seems like it's got a great story. The graphics look great. It seems like just a very well done game, and yet it always falls off of my radar. Even though every time I see it, I go, I need to play that game. That game looks really good, and it gets really good reviews. It seems to be beloved. And lo and behold, here comes this sequel, which once again put this, you know, put it back on my radar. But this 10 minute video, I watched this and I, it looks, <laughs> it kind of reminds me of the first one. It looks so good. I feel like this is an amazing story based game with actual decent gameplay. You know, we're currently playing the quarry, which, you know, it has limited gameplay, but is much more story kind of interactive movie based. And I feel like Plague Tale probably, finds that balance a lot better never having played it Mm -hmm. you and i kind of chatted a little bit paul before the show where you know you guys know i loved hellblade hellblade was a little bit similar in that regard because it seems to be more of like a story based not high on the gameplay elements and i kind of got a hellblade vibe from that Mm. and i I don't know if that's accurate at all i'm not saying that it is but that's kind of the vibe i got (laughs) from it and so i instantly was interested in this because it just it's one of those games that looks like it is done very well all around and it's one of those series that i keep saying i need to play this i need to play this game because this looks like it's going to be great and this new this new sequel or i guess it's a sequel yeah it's a direct yeah, sequel. Yeah, right it looks like it's really great and so at some point i'm going to have to actually dive into this like i've been meaning to for a while well, you should probably pull a Michael Butler on this one because I just looked it up and this one is 80% off of Plague Tale Innocence. The first yeah. one is 80% off on the Steam sale right now. It's $8. Um, this game is... Uh, Innocence is one of the games that I've always wanted to play. Um, there's one mechanic, though, that I've watched uh, on several YouTube videos that I just... I just Every time I want to buy it, I'm like, I know this is going to be really annoying, but there's a mechanic in certain... Le- I don't know if it's one big level or the whole game, but you always have to carry around this torch or the rats will eat you and the, the torch keeps the rats away. And it always looks too terrifying for me because it's just really, <laughs> really awful. Um, but I have always wanted to play a Plague, Plague Tale Innocence. It is in my cart on the Steam store right now because I I am looking forward to... Maybe this 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 sequel is a catalyst to me finally playing, like Josh said, a very beloved game. It's mostly positive like crazy, and I would love to play it. So I, I might play it and just dive right into the sequel right afterwards. 
Yeah, Innocence is fun. I've played it. I picked it up a couple years ago, probably on a Steam sale. How were the rats? Yeah, you you gotta keep the rats away, Michael. It's the 1300s. (laughs) They're carrying the plague. (laughs) Like, what what are you gonna do? You you can't play with the rats. And how do you keep rats away? You know, the fire is usually the best way to do it. Yeah, you know, it's, it's definitely a lot more combat than Hellblade, but I can see why it would give kind of those vibes. Mm. It it does, you know, it's, it's stealth based for the most part. So you're not so much doing like frontward assaults on everything so it's a lot of sneaking around and stealth but you do have like your slingshot and you can one shot guards as long as they don't have a helmet you know some stuff like that it's also a very fascinating story because your younger brother is sick and you're not too sure if you're gonna be able to find a cure and it turns out there's all this supernatural stuff connected with your brother's bloodline and and all that kind of stuff so i really did like innocence definitely have my eye on requiem uh, I don't know if it's something that we would ever deep dive on the show. I think it's a little bit more like up my alley than your guys is because you guys don't really tend to play nice with stealth games. And these oh, games generally game? require more stealth. It, no. Yeah. That was the one thing that threw me off in watching this 10 minute video for Requiem as I was like, oh, is this all stealth? It's and a then lot it, of stealth. It, it, there was some fighting, which interested me. Mm-hmm. And there was like some fire bombs with burning people up. And that's when I like my kind of evil side. Was a like, lot yeah, of burning yeah, people up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe my rose tinted glasses didn't see as much of the stealth in the uh, trailer or the gameplay. Uh, I was more looking at the fighting and stuff, but I just kind of figured it was just that's the way they walked around as stealthy. And I, uh, I just I do not like stealth games. They, they're so frustrating to me. Oh uh, yeah, see, I, I I like it quite a bit. All right, let's move on to our next story here. I know that we have talked a lot about Overwatch two lately, but it just seems like every week there's more news that we got to cover here on the show. And we talked earlier about how Overwatch 2 is going to be free to play. And what we found out here this week is that it's actually going to completely replace Overwatch 1. So Overwatch 1 eventually will go the way of the dinosaurs. When Overwatch 2 comes out, it will completely take over, which is kind of a big deal because it means you're not going to be able to log into the old game and play the old mechanics with the 6v6 combat. That will be completely overridden by Overwatch 2. Does that matter to you guys? Yes. Yes, not, it does for me. Not one bit for me, <laughs> honestly. Oh, <man. laughs> I just I don't want the 6v6 to go away. I want to be able to play that if I, if, if I want to go do it and have the option to do it. And it's like, bummer. I mean, it is great because it means more people are playing Overwatch 2. You know, you're not going to have a split where you're, you know, trying to just desperately get into matches and so forth but i don't know i i I really would like the option to go back and play the old game every once in a while but that's just me i'm a nostalgia person they might put it in the arcade anyway like every once in a while they might let you play classic 6v6 mode but yeah you won't be able to always play it that's for sure yeah for me i could care less it makes complete sense to me i get that there's certain people that are upset by this michael being one of them I, it's just, you know, having played Overwatch 2, and we did an Overwatch 2 PvP beta deep dive. So if you want to hear our thoughts on that, you can go back and listen to that. But for me, Overwatch Real 2... Real fun episode, too. It really was. Yeah. Uh, Overwatch 2 does everything a little bit better. Is it a... And at the time, we did not know about the free-to-play aspect, right? So this is interesting because a lot more information came out after that. But we kind of went, I don't know if this game's going to be worth $40. This isn't really a sequel so much as a very, very large patch to a currently existing game with some pretty sweeping changes. But it's better. It's better in my opinion. I like the, the pace of it. I like the changes that they've made to the characters. I like the, you know, the, the graphical and audio fidelity changes they've made and stuff like that. So for them to say, Hey, listen, this, we're going to make this free. That makes total sense for them to say, listen, this is our focus moving forward. We want to stop having to spend resources on old Overwatch. It makes complete sense to me. I, I, I support that decision. I think it's going to free them up to focus on Overwatch 2 and make it as good as they possibly can. So I support it. I, I feel bad if people feel bad about it, but I get why they're doing it. And I, I actually am behind them on that, which I'm not generally behind Blizzard on a lot of things anymore, but it makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, what I get why you, they're Paul? doing it. I just, it just frustrates me. I don't know. Um, I know we're not covering this, but it's worth a mention real fast that, uh, because of the force transfer, if you have any unopened loot boxes, those are going to open automatically now oh. when you transfer over. I did read that. So. Yes. They, they should have had an open all loot box well, they don't want you for to years. open all, though. 
I I'm up to 820 loot boxes. I checked yesterday. 800. I have 820 loot boxes oh, in Overwatch, man. and I don't open what? them because I'm not going to do it 820 times. But as soon as Overwatch Two unlocks, they said they're going to automatically open any of those old loot boxes since Overwatch Two will not have any loot box system whatsoever. So yeah, they're going to take care of that for me, which is nice. Uh, I would also really recommend checking out the new kit for Junker Queen. She's going to uh, be don't... great. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we we don't have the time to break down everything with her, but they did release all the details about her kit. And th- what I really love is that a lot of it builds around damage over time, which nobody's really had before other than like you get the dynamite from Ash and, you know, some stuff like that. But basically almost everything in her kit causes damage over time. And then her passive ability lets her heal based on a percentage of her damage over time. So she's kind of like a berserker warrior that's going to be in the fray, constantly doing damage while self-healing. I think it's going to be a really fun character. I really just can't wait for Overwatch 2 to come out because I want to be able to play Junker Queen. And I really want to see what the new support character will be. That's the one that I'm really waiting for. Uh, but yeah, Overwatch 2, we've got not not too far down the road. So how do you feel, though, about... I know Josh asked you earlier, and I kind of talked over it, but how do you feel about that going away, Overwatch 1? Oh, I assumed it was going away, because they're not going to program everything twice. I just kind of yeah. assumed, oh, Overwatch 2, as soon as they said free-to-play, I was like, oh, so that really just proves that it's Overwatch 1.5. It's just replacing, it's a mega patch, replacing the old game. Calling it Overwatch 2 is a little bit of a misnomer. It's just replacing Overwatch 1, and I, I get it. I, I don't think I'm going to miss the 6v6, and I'm sure they'll have various events where you get to still play it. I still love playing No Limits every once in a while. Like back when Overwatch 1 first released, you could just run with six Symmetras, and it was like the funniest thing in the world. Or you could use six Sombras that are all just <laughs> running around, you know, doing voice lines while being invisible. That's so, like a nightmare for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> every once in a while, I like bringing back the old old modes. All right, and then last thing that we're going to cover here this week. This was your discovery, Josh. I'll let you take the reins, but you wanted to talk a little bit about Neon White. I do because every I like to keep my eyes on the I mean, we're professionals, let's be honest. So I, you know, we try to stay plugged into the video game world and new releases and and games that are coming out, you know, there's there, it feels like every year there's that surprise hit game that comes out of nowhere that starts getting amazing reviews and even if it doesn't necessarily look that good at first, it starts to generate a ton of hype. And then I, you know, even if it's not my style of game, I start to look into it and I go, hey, what is this game? Why are people talking? Why do I see it on the gaming websites and news and, and, you know, all this stuff? And so there's a game that came out called Neon White. And I, it started to get a lot of hype. I started picking up on that. I remember watching a video on this a few weeks back or, you know, when it released or something like that. And I kind of went, yeah, it's just, a, it looks like a parkour. <laughs> uh, game mixed with cards, and this looks very, very strange. It's got this weird anime style, but then it's got these screens that look like a dating sim, and I was just kind of very put off by everything that I saw, and I kind of just went, I don't know. Some people like that stuff. It's not for me, but then the hype train on this got rolling, and the more gaming news sites that I started looking at, I kept seeing Neon White, I kept seeing Neon White, and I'm like, dude, what is, what is it with this game? So I started digging into it, and... You know, that's what this game is. It is a kind of speed run parkour style game where you get cards that give you abilities. And these cards give you guns that you can use. But then if you discard the card, it it triggers like a second ability. And your whole goal in this game is to get through a level as fast as you possibly can. On average, most of the levels last about 45 seconds. So you can tell that this is very mm. fast paced. Oh, real um, speed run. Yes, exactly. And so I started looking into it a little bit more. I hopped on Steam and lo and behold, the first thing I see on Steam is overwhelmingly positive reviews. And there's 2000 plus reviews on this game. So that's like, whoa, wait a minute. What's going on here? So I start reading some of the reviews and everybody says, listen, I know this game looks weird. I know it looks like it wouldn't work, but I'm telling you, this is one of the most fun games that I have played in a long time. It's currently on sale. It's only 10% off because it's a brand spanking new release, but I picked it up because I said, hey, I need to check out what the hype is about on this game. And I like action games, right? Like it's, you know, Rocket League. I, I like these games that just, they're nothing but gameplay, right? You don't need story. You don't need any of that other stuff in there. I am only about an hour in, so I'm going to reserve my judgments and thoughts. We can talk about that later if we want to. 
to, but I, I, you know, I told you guys, I kind of understand the hype after only an hour playing this game so far. So, you know, check it out. I, I would say the, the gameplay demos or the gameplay, you know, videos don't really do it justice. It's kind of hard to capture what this game does right in watching a video, but so far so good. Yeah, I do. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm kind of drawn to overwhelmingly positive uh, reviews as well. Like, I don't like speed running games. And it's funny because when you mentioned like parkour with cards, all I thought was this Gambit. Like, just give it oh. a pain and it's Gambit from the <laughs> yeah. X Men. Yeah. I'm like, wait, cards? And uh, but I don't know. This this looks interesting. And anytime a game has that many positive reviews, there's got to be something good about it. And so that's that's when you see me start to venture outside of my norm because my norm is probably like space games and rpgs that's my that's my bread and butter if i see a game that's about that that's why i'm still you know so excited about starfield um but then i i venture out sometimes when i see these overwhelmingly positive reviews on a game that i would never normally pick up because it's not my type of game and then all of a sudden i'll get sucked into that genre so this might be the speed run sucker for me where it just sucks me into that genre the other thing i'll say real quick on this is like what's that racing game track mania like you know that's kind of like that speed running track game and i, I don't like that game like that game, i know you're trying to go for the fastest time and stuff but we've played some of that and i just don't enjoy that the 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 angle that neon white goes with is it's almost like a puzzle level like you have to figure out how do you get from point a to point b you have to kill these little demons along the way and you have to try to do it as fast as possible but Every level is fairly unique in the sense that, you know, there's platforming sections or you have to, you know, time your double jumps and things like that. Or you have to use this card to get to that card to span this gap or something like that. So there is this very unique puzzle element to each level. So it's like the world's fastest parkour based puzzle speed run game. <laughs> <laughs> with a with a side of dating sim in there, which is very, very strange. <laughs> but so somehow weird. it all works. I I'm impressed so far. Like I said, we can talk about it later, but it's something that I want to at least put on people's radar because this game seems to be generating a ton of hype and it feels like something new and completely different. And that's hard in, in, you know, in gaming nowadays. As if it wasn't weird enough that it's parkour with cards, but we're adding a dating sim. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Where did you I find know. this? I know. <laughs> yeah. I think my one reservation in looking at it, and I don't know how many levels there are, to me, it, 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 I wasn't sure it was going to be worth the $20 price tag. After an hour, do you feel like it probably is worth that? I feel like, I feel like it's going to be well worth that. Okay. To be it looks honest. like it has a lot of replayability to me. It's, I, I, I'm, like I said, so far in an hour's time, I have replayed several levels because you go for speed medals. So you can ace a level, which means, Hey, you've got like a really, really good time on this. And my goal is I want to ace all the levels, right? Like that's not required, but that's kind of what I was focusing on at first. And then as you beat a level, it unlocks other things in the level. So you can go back and now there's an item that's in the level that's hard to get to. And so now you have a different puzzle to solve. Instead of the puzzle of how do I get to the end of this level quickly, now it's how do I use these cards and these abilities to get to this gift that I can get, that I can then give to some of the other characters in the game, which plays into the dating sim part just a little bit. <laughs> but it's again, it's just like a very super fast-based puzzle to try to solve. And I think like when you take all of these things and you kind of smash them together in this weird, weird blender that you have, it works. <laughs> and so, yes, for 20 bucks, so far, so very good in my opinion. And it seems like it's going to be hmm. well worth that um, amount of money. And I saw um, some video where there's levels later on that look insane. Like every wall and every floor is a spike. And so you have to like time things to get the cards that allow you to double jump continuously so that you, you it, it looks like it gets really, really bananas after a while. Interesting. Regardless, I'm just glad to see developers try something new and unique yeah. instead of the Absolutely. same old sequels and the old IPs that everyone trusts and loves. It's, it's nice to see a little bit of innovation. So I'm definitely all for it. All right. Well, that wait, I gotta oh. hijack the show. Uh -oh. Got something else, Michael? Fast. I, I have to I have to give a shout out real fast. Guys, I have been trying to get a hold of a PS5 
for a very oh, long yes. time. And I have to shout out Hootenberg. He helped me track one down finally. It's in the mail. It's coming on Tuesday. Oh. I'm so happy. And I, I cannot not shout out Hootenberg from our Discord channel. He's been a longtime listener of the show. Man, I cannot thank you enough for helping me out with this because I have been notoriously just cursed on getting this. So Hootenberg, you're the man. Appreciate you. All right, Paul. Now we can end the show. Dude, I just had to do it. We say it all the time. We have the best community out there, man. We do. Yeah, we really do. So, and that's awesome. I when I found out about that, number one, I thought that was super cool of Hootenberg, and then I was so happy for you, Michael, because it's like this this quest that you've been on <laughs> and failed miserably multiple oh, times man. is like finally over. <laughs> the broken link was the worst when Sony sent me. You've been selected. Log in between eight a.m. or eleven a.m. and six p.m. I log in right at eleven o'clock, and the friggin' link is broken from the email. It won't. Oh, I'm man. Like, what? Come on, Sony. It's so sad. Well, Hootenberg's got your back. And if you guys want to come join our Discord server, which we honestly could not hype up enough, there is a link in the episode description. Totally nice free. Segue. We'd love to have you in there. And uh, yeah, we're all done here for today. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this week in gaming. We will have a short quick take episode this Saturday, as always. And then we will be back with another hour long plus episode on Monday. So can't wait to talk to you guys again for that one. Until then, happy gaming. All right. Cheers, all. All right. See you, everybody.